from Namakon, hear my plea. Give me a harem for me to see. And with a female who's competent this time, not the arcana bullshit. Ah, demons again. First, I want to ask, what's the dealio with visual novels and demons, huh? Yes, humans have simple tendencies, but as a protector of the Harrow Nomicon, the adventure love interest hybrid for all your harrowing needs. I implore you, great craters in the sky, can you at least give me something, something different? Well then. Hello, internet, and welcome to the show. Today I bring you the anime, Dance with Devils. I advise that you buckle yourself in because this is gonna be a wild ride. A very dizzy wild ride. Uh, I don't have much of an intro this time, so let's just roll it. You know what? Roll it. Roll it! Ritsuka Tachibana, a second year high schooler who attends Shiko Gakin, spends a peaceful school life with her mother Maria. But the balance will collapse one day. Is that a person or a demon? This is a story of a girl who is being loved and charmed by beautiful devils. So let's be honest with ourselves, the plot isn't anything new. Girl gets caught in some mystical series of events, in this case a war where she must try to dodge the unfortunate outcomes of her fate, all while being seduced by the rainbow brigade of male archetypes. I mean seriously, the demonic world is just full of constant warring, isn't it? They must have some schedule for their crisis of the month or something. But anyway, what does save this story however from being a complete write-off is its theater-like atmosphere. But more importantly, this! Yeah, this is a musical reverse harem. Not making that up. But before you think it's another attempt to get on the Utano Prince bandwagon, it's not. Every detail from its show's title cards to its setting is reminiscent enough of a play. Its musical numbers don't just come out of nowhere, but rather like a play invoke the character's thoughts and feelings while performing actions appropriate of the scenes. I know it's weird to say, but I like the fact that they simply went all in with the play gimmick, as gimmicky as it sounds. I'm tired of recent modern harems not committing to some sort of idea, and while I agree DWD's mediocre displays were still heavily present, as sad as it sounds, not escaping the bland standards is to be expected of the modern reverse harems. At the very least, it's the elements of the show's following through that worked. Now for its weaknesses, and I'm talking about weaknesses that aren't already obvious, like how the entire show feels like one big commercial, out of all the genres in anime, harems, especially reverse harems, are the biggest offenders of this. Like, so obvious, it's not even hidden. I'm looking straight at you, Tano Prince Sama Season 2. Look, DWD, we get it. You were a visual novel first. It's not like we can't see the tag hanging from your pants. But DWD specifically felt really empty once I finished watching it. Like there was something missing that kept the show from being a full package. Where I said Gangster was trying to fit too much in the 12 episodes, DWD didn't feel packed enough. Just something you watched and that's it. I appreciated what the plot was conveying, but at the end of the day, it couldn't escape its commercialized fate, I guess. Eh, maybe the characters might feel better. Or should I say the one character that was better off? Our heroine Ritsuka. Although I will talk about her male cast, this time I'll do things a little different and wait till after show to talk about both Rem and Lindo, because without spoilers, they and the other guys can be summed up in just one sentence. The suave bug zapper on legs, the ironic masochist, soon soon punchy boss times, cold as ice corporate ladder junior, and of course, the cop out. Our heroine Ritsuka on the surface is your average schoolgirl who literally in her intro song talks about being a normal schoolgirl. She's not afraid to say what's on her mind, she can be brass and cares a lot about her family and keeping the status quo constant. She could easily be summed up as a little sister type character with a little more caution. But there's one crucial thing you need to know about her. She can think. Like asking questions think. Between her little sister and grave tendencies, with Lindo and what happened to her family throughout the series, she, unlike a lot of modern heroines, will take the initiative to ask those questions, like, why are the forces of doctors after me? 
Or is my best friend hiding something from me? Or my personal favorite, why are you putting locks on the window, Oni-chan? Granted, when she does succeed in getting information, she really doesn't do anything with it. Oh, you say that my grandfather has a key to the mystery and it's a possible trap for vampires and I have no possible way of defending myself? In her defense, when she is teased to the lead of this drama llama, her reasons are fairly accurate for why she goes. She wants to get out of this mess and she does make sure that she doesn't do anything if it's not for a legitimate reason, but her curiosity at times can be her own downfalling. She… she walks into a lot of traps. For the guys I'm willing to talk about right now, I got to say I really didn't have much of a best boy, but rather a favorite and a least favorite character-wise. My favorite would have to go to Mage for his… how do you say… Sundele magic. Every time he was on screen, the absurdity of the show just floated in the right direction. I don't know if that's intentional or on accident, but his character is just too fun to ignore. Well, my least favorite has got to be the bonus boy. Yeah, him. You know how in visual novels, after you get all of the routes, only to get the hidden bonus guy who's containing a secret behind all of the plot's bit of information? Well, this guy was annoying. Not only that, but he was everywhere for the majority of the first half. I never liked how he was shoehorned as the exposition character, basically telling Ritsuka everything in a matter of 10 minutes of his episode, and pulling a brother's conflict on top of all of that. <laughs> Hey guys, so sorry to interrupt the review for a bit, but this little part was recorded after the fact because I realized I was wrong. Bonus Boy is indeed Best Boy. After watching the anime again and through having such a fun time editing his scenes, he grew on me for just being plain old absurd. More than Bun Boy over here. What do I mean he was fun to edit? Well, look at this. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Yep. Still hate that he was the exposition character, though. But if I was playing this game, I'd want to play all the routes just to get to his. So that's dogs as romantic routes, too? Humanoid routes still a zip. Now back to the show. Gee, I wonder who took the reins of this anime. Of course it'd be you guys. For those who don't know, Brainspace has been responsible for almost all of the recent reverse harems, from Amnesia to Kamigami no Osobi to that clusterfuck of a harem. It's not that the studio is bad per se, it's that their style has become very formulaic to me. They just do enough to make it look like the original content and nothing more for some of the series. True, they do do a variety of anime, and I mean a lot of anime, but how can this studio that helped make anime like this and that almost be fine with this or this. Brainspace, in my eyes, has always been somewhat of a mixed bag, but lately they've not done so well. With DWD, it really shows. Sure, the art is pretty and glitzy, but there's nothing that stands out. Nothing different from their harems beforehand. At this point, though, my expectations are already pretty low, so yeah. Sound was different, though. For an anime with a musical gimmick, it needed to deliver, and I'm happy to say that it does. Its songs and sound transitions make the show at times feel like a Disney princess movie. And when I mean a Disney princess, movie, I mean it's hammed up glam and glitter, not its actual appeal. The songs didn't fall flat, but like before, nothing stood out. On an intellectual level, that is. But at least it was fun to watch, and if you're having fun watching it, that's really all that matters. Its opening was okay, but its ending, I surprisingly liked it. A lot. I will admit that these types of shows are good at making chorus performances of its male cast. The visuals perfectly match the song's carnival nature, and I love its chorus overall, so good job, anime! As for now, I can only really recommend the sub in terms of voices, simply because the official dub is not out yet, and its broadcast dub, it isn't really one of their best, so I don't really want to recommend it. All 
Alright, it's after show time. That wonderful part of my reviews where I take a break and talk as a fan, spoilers and all. This section is for those who have already finished the series, so without further ado, this is your final spoiler warning. Now, the reason I waited till now for talking about our two golden boys, Rem and Lindo, is that A, Ritsuka does in fact choose a guy to love. Yes, I know it's obvious after episode 1, but I'll get to that. And B, without spoilers, I couldn't give them justice. Starting with the poster boy himself, Rem is the student body president who's in search for the Grimoire in order to maintain his position as heir of his family, and yes, if you haven't figured it out already, is the main love interest for Ritsuka. Because Rule 6 in the Harem Namicon states, that in case a boy is chosen and they are not direct family, it's usually the first one seen. Like I said earlier, the romance was thankfully not forced, and as the one who gets the most character development, doesn't really come out as a bad guy. Just the same cold as ice but warms up type character that we're used to. Then there's Lindo our big brother cop-out character who's throughout the series is shown with a mysterious past. This mysterious past becomes a major focal point for our heroine where in all honesty, the twist was kind of anticlimactic. The fact that he's actually a damper specifically was new, but it was already hinted that he was hiding his teen vampire genes from the get-go. Now why do I call him a cop-out, do you ask? Well, it could be that he pulled a I'm not actually your brother card. My god, anime either need to commit or not commit with their brother characters. Either go big or go home. To Ori Emo or not to Ori Emo, that is the fated question. True, I did admire his desire to do everything he could to protect Ritsuka, and his backstory made sense. But towards the end, all I asked was, what the fuck, man? You wait till then, when Ritsuka is already distressed with all the info to confess? Really, bro? You just dug your own grave. Or it's just Rule 8 coming into effect. Child Childhood friends slash close relatives normally get friend zoned. Well, at least you never, oh, I don't know, locked your loved one in a metal cage and filled it with stuffed animals like a certain person I know? Lastly, let's talk about the vampires and that ending. Notice how I didn't talk much about them till now. That's because they're really forgettable. Most are just grunts to the big bad guy, and this so-called big bad guy was also a waste of time. Especially since old dog brain over here knew what was going to happen to use the leverage of the situation to help his real master. This lord vampire just felt more gimmicky than anything else in this series. We know you're Lindo's father. We know you want to beat out the devils, and your motives to revive your dead wife are just mixed in with your own greed for world domination. In the end, you're full of it, aren't you? I mean, you just lost to flower power. Flower power. You know what? I can't take any more of this reverse harem bullshit. I am out. And as any stereotypical black person would say, PEACE! Yeah, you know, Harem Namakon, you're right. Yeah, the show was in a way stupid, and its musical aspect, despite being a cool idea, didn't save it from being anything new and hip, but I oddly still enjoyed it. A lot. I had so much fun watching the absurdity, the silly commentary, and the mundane. So I guess the moral of the story is that if you're having fun watching an anime to a point where you even don't understand it, then that's okay. Thanks, Harem Namicon! <laughs> So after some consideration and 20 minutes of watching Bad Puppy Grooming, I award Dance with Devils with a recommendation to try it, with a watchability rating of PG-13. I got to say, even with the show not breaking any major grounds, its entertainment value is still solid. If there's anything I can take out of it, is that the musical atmosphere was consistent and not all over the place like other shows with random song numbers. Put to a montage. We'll get to you, Prince Sama. In time. In time. Sure, they didn't break all the marks, but they did try to add a new spin to the smell of Reverse Harem's past. So, welcome to the Harem family, DWD. We're happy to have you. 
For other recommendations, you should check out, insert here, any brain space reverse harem. Not because they're any better per se, but sometimes in the anime world you just need a variety of one running horse to feel adjusted. Plus, everyone likes sugary stuff, right? If you graduated that academy of harems, why not try a challenge at watching Makai OG Devil and Realist, a show belonging to the ever-growing bromance genre. I know it's called something different, but that's what I like to key it as. It's an interesting, what the hell did I just watch type of show, but more fun nonetheless. Now for a series that everyone can watch, girls and guys alike, and it's a story that doesn't give your brain empty calories, I point you towards Chrono Crusade. It's got similar elements of devils and the church, and characters that are far more memorable. So that's it for me, internet! So like the video, subscribe, check out our Patreon, all that jazz, and for today's menu, I try salad. Got to feed the soul sometimes. This is Shannon, and if you'll excuse me... There's a certain series that finally needs to be tackled. So stay tuned to Anime America! Hey! We got a website! You should check it out. Link is in the description box down below. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, so follow us! Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe to Anime America Podcast for more awesome reviews. If you're interested in anything of pop culture, check out our other awesome channel, Pop Spectrum. You'll be glad you did. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned to Anime America!